Hey everyone, I'm Herrick Kimball, and today I'm going to show you an idea from my Planet Whizbang idea book for gardeners, and specifically it is Pat Gorham's hoe handle rub recipe. This rub, as I call it, is a paste made with natural ingredients, as you'll see, for uh, preserving the wood on tool handles. Now this is my fork, my garden fork, a important tool to me. I have not uh, kept it clean. It needs to be cleaned, it needs to be oiled, and we're going to use this recipe on this when I get done. The recipe has three ingredients. First, we have beeswax, and I have some beeswax chunks here. You can use paraffin or old candles. That's what Pat Gorham has told me, that's what he's done, but I have never done that. I've always used beeswax because beeswax is natural. Paraffin is not necessarily natural. And I like natural and I love the smell of beeswax too. So beeswax is the first ingredient. Then we have boiled linseed oil. It needs to be boiled linseed oil. That's important. Then the last ingredient that you need is turpentine. And turpentine is a natural ingredient. It comes from trees and turpentine is Turpentine is one of the most beautiful smells that I've ever smelled. You know, the air fresheners that people buy for their car, they don't have a turpentine air freshener. If they did, I would buy it. I need to tell you that this is the first time that I have ever made this recipe with uh, weighed or measured proportions. I've always done, like Pat told me, add about a third of each ingredient. Today, I decided I would weigh out uh, about a third of each ingredient. And so what I've done here, and we'll see what, how it ends up. I'm pretty sure we'll end up with a, with a good consistency of paste. I've got two ounces of the beeswax pieces here. And I've got two ounces. This is weight we're talking, two ounces by weight of the beeswax, two ounces by weight of this boiled linseed oil. This is a, a jelly jar, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the uh, beeswax pieces in here like this, and the, the turpentine was in the bottom, and uh, let's see, we'll get every last bit in there. And then I'm going to pour in the uh, linseed oil, boiled linseed oil, so that's what we have, and now we need to heat it up. We need to melt it all together. To do that, I'm going to use this candle warmer. Now, I have done this by putting these ingredients in a, like a coffee can and clipping a pair of vice grips on it and taking a torch on the bottom of it and heating the ingredients up, and that certainly works. But here, I'm going to use this candle warmer because it's uh, a more gentle and sure safer. It's safer. That's what I want to say. It's safer. It takes longer for this to melt these ingredients together, but it's safer and that's what I'm going to use. This candle warmer I bought for a quarter at a yard sale. I'm going to turn this on. I'll time how long it takes. Not that that's really important, but uh, it'll probably take a while. And I'm going to go mow my lawn and then I'm going to come back here uh, later and we will see what we've got. Well, let's take a look at this. It has been two and a half hours. Patience is a virtue. I put this cup over the top so that it might help hold in some heat. And we're getting there. I have come along and mixed this up a few times. It's still a little bit chunky. We want it to be all melted there. Okay, we'll come back in a little bit. Alrighty here, it has been a little bit more than three hours. This is still not quite right. I'm getting impatient. I'm gonna show you another option for safely heating this up. Yeah, so there we go, this is plan B. Get a pan of water, put your jelly jar with the ingredients in that, put it on the gas grill on the back patio and give it a few minutes here. We are, as they say, cooking with gas. All right, everything has melted beautifully. Now I'm going to, well, I'm gonna turn this off, turn the gas off. Yeah, get my glove on. I'm filming with one hand and demonstrating with the other. Now, I'm going to show you this, 
how nicely melted it all is. See that? Looks like honey. Color of honey. I'm going to pour it in. Pour it in here. Like so. Isn't that beautiful? Maybe that's enough. Boy, I wish I had another tin. That's enough. Right there. It's okay. We can use it out of the jar here. Now I'm going to let that cool down so we can see what kind of a paste consistency we have with one third of each ingredient by weight and uh, then we'll put it to use. Now right there is that fork and it was dirty but it's not dirty anymore because I washed it off and I let it dry. The metal is nice and clean. The wood is clean also and I sanded it. I sanded it with 120 grit sandpaper. It's all ready. Now let's see what we've got here. Here it is. We're going to open this now and find out what we've got for paste. And I've already looked, but right there. Can you see that? Is it in good focus? This is beautiful. Beautiful. We'll see. Put my dirty fingernail in here. Get a little bit of it. I'll tell you, that's a good mix. That's a good mix. It, it softens. If you work it a little bit, a little bit of heat, a little bit of friction, comes right up beautifully. Ooh. Oh, that is awesome. Hey, even if you don't have any wooden handles to treat with this handle rub, you should make it just so every so often you can open it up and take a sniff. This is something special. So now I'm going to put the rub on the handle. Okay, this is the fun part. Get yourself a little bit of terry cloth, an old towel. Get yourself a little bit of the rub right here and do the rub. Can you see that? Yeah, I think you can. Rub it right in there. Good. You got a, a crack in the wood or, or seams where pieces come together. Goob it right in there. Now I have at times in the past, I'll show that there on camera, used a heat gun once I've applied this to heat it up on the wood, kind of open the pores a little bit and get it to flow into the pores. I think that does a better job, but this, what I'm doing right here does a fine job also. Actually the heat gun you see right here where we've got this narrow part. I could goob some, some of this stuff up here and use the heat gun and it would flow right down into that. I'll probably do that, but I don't have the heat gun now. But I'm just giving you the idea here. I should tell you that uh, if you want to get your hands into this, you can do that too. And there's nothing wrong with that. I don't think there's any real danger to that. We're talking natural ingredients here, and that is a pleasant experience, I have to say, to do this barehanded. Come right down here, very tactile, a tactile experience. And uh, you can rub the wood with your hand, get a little friction, get a little heat that way, but yeah. This is fun. This is nice. Why don't I do this more often? I don't know. I tend to let these handles get in pretty bad shape before I do anything to fix them. I know why I don't do it more often. It's because I'm busy. Busy. Tyranny of the urgent keeps me from doing things that I enjoy like this. And I've got a... Look, is it there? Well, there was a crack. I guess it's right there. There's a little crack. So this, this wax, beeswax, will go right into that crack. Yeah, this is nice. What was I going to tell you? Oh, this rub is not just for wood handles. You can use it on metal. I bought a bunch of uh, clamps at a yard sale and uh, they were nice old made in USA clamps, but they were rusty. I put a uh, wire wheel to them, got all the rust off, coated them with the hoe handle rub here. Uh, then I buffed them off, buffed them off with a 
cloth when it was done, they were beautiful and they were protected from rust. And that's what you need to do. Once you get this on, you, on your handle or your metal that you're protecting, uh, after it dries on your handle, then you take your soft cloth and you do like so. And the finished effect is so pleasant to the hands. It's beautiful and it's, it's just a joy to do this to your tools. Now, one last thing, and that is right here. Can you see? Yeah, you can see. See this boot? It's getting a little bit worn. I have used this hoe handle rub on my leather boots. And I'm not saying that you should do this. I'm just saying that I do it. I have done it. I haven't had any problem doing it. It seems to work really fine. It's beeswax with some thinner. And, uh, you know, you get the idea right there. You can make your own leather preservative. Now, somebody may comment and say, you know, you're doing something bad there. But, boy, it sure does look good, doesn't it? And like I said, I've done it before. Look at the difference. Look at the difference. Beautiful. It's, it's important to keep your lid on your product here because it will tend to dry out if left open to the air for an extended period. So uh, whatever you got it in, a jelly jar or a tin, put a lid on it when you're done and uh, it'll last a lot longer. That's it. Hey, put that right in my pocket here. See that? Fits right in your pocket. Thanks for watching everybody.